because uh, what has to change is the narrative. And part of what Nancy was talking about when she and David made the decision about uh, their own kids in school is what a lot of parents are dealing with. Okay, we have this decision to make. Now let's listen to uh, all the stories that our friends and our neighbors are telling us, uh, people in our congregations are telling us about where your kids have to go to school and why, right? So the, the question is, how does that narrative change in favor of a, a, a neighborhood public school education instead of a charter school or a private school education uh, that would take them out of this integrated mix of, of students that we know has both a basic educational benefit and very much so a societal impact because of the multiculturalism and the fluency uh, that people would have in terms of learning how to live together and work together with people uh, sometimes who don't look like you. Uh, it, it, in, in San Antonio, some of you uh, might know that uh, my daughter, Cameron Vickery, who is actually moderating this particular uh, meeting right now, uh, helped to start a group called Rooted. Rooted. Uh, that, and, and, and this is all behind, uh, the whole reason for it was this very thing. My little granddaughters were getting ready to start school and she was hearing all these narratives from her uh, friends about why they needed to go to some place other than their local school. And she began to ask why that is and on what basis were they making that decision. And they, so they, they created this group called Rooted where the, the, the goal is to tell the story uh, of your local public school uh, so that people hear the real story. There's no marketing dollars, you know, for, for public schools to go out there and tell the story of that local school, whereas charters have it, private schools have it, and they're all trying to change the narrative in their favor. So what we're talking about here is how can we even the stakes in a sense, right? How can we, how can we make the, the playing field level and part of what's going on is reinvesting where there has been disinvestment so that it looks, feels, and seems just as it's performing at an equal level, uh, that it's, it's the right competition and the right place to go. I mean, it's, uh, it is both a great question and a Gordian knot. Um, there isn't any one particular thing that I think that we can do. There are buckets of things that I think that we can do. And the first is the school system actually has to perform, right? Mm -hmm. We actually have to have a good product that is mm -hmm. uh, appealing to people from all walks of life. And the good news is when we first started our conversation this afternoon, I laid out the improvement that Dallas ISD has been on for the past five to 10 years. But I've got to say, George, that a lot of the changes that we had to make in order to increase academic achievement, the innovation that manifests from those changes, some of those things were politically unpopular. And it took a community that was willing to stand behind tough change to then get us to the point where we would see the, this achievement improve and this, and this innovation attract people back to the system. So first thing would be, Dallas ISD has got to continue to keep its eye on improving academic achievement regard, regardless of the politics, and our community needs to stand behind this continued change, uh, which will continue to be difficult. I think the second thing is for our families who are deciding to actually choose DISD, we need to both as a district empower them to help share their story, and we need them to be willing to share that story and push back against the false narrative. Um, we've got, we're, we're continuing to expand our vo volunteer and partnerships organization within DISD and our partnerships outside. There's a great organization called United to Learn, and it is quickly growing into a key intermediary between the community and DISD, helping us both improve academic achievement by volunteering in schools and create a compelling narrative to the community about why DISD um, matters. So that would be a great organization that I would put, I would push interested people um, to kind of consider. Um, but then if you don't have a kid in DISD, if you are uh, either someone who is, who's putting your kids uh, 
uh, in, a, in a different school system, someone who is just having kids thinking about where you want to go, I would ask you to just go look at your neighborhood DISD school. That's the first thing. The second thing would be go to dallasisd.org, search in our schools of choice all of the other schools that we've got that may not be your traditional neighborhood school um, that also provide a high quality education like Solar Preparatory School for Girls. And lastly, if you don't have a kid, you're not having to make that decision, I guarantee you you're going to be in a conversation with someone who's going to tell you that DISD is not a good school system. And I would ask you to just challenge that thought. Ask them, what data do you have that suggests that that's the case? When was the last time you were in a DISD school? And what I found is when you push back tactfully, that most of that misperception goes away, and then they're ready to have a conversation about what's actually happening, happening in DISD. Those are a host of things that I think that we can do to continue to, to, to help us along this journey.